open your eyes because you'll find out that just being here, he's having mercy. Amen. It doesn't have to be. The different, the different salvations that we have felt, and by, by that I mean he has saved some of us from sickness, some disease. He has saved some of us from mental anguish, others from poverty. So many things that he can save you from, but the main thing is that he has saved us from death. And he's given us everlasting life. I'm so glad to have our visiting friends today. And I, I pray the Lord may bless you in a very special manner this hour. I'd like to ask you to turn with me to the book of Exodus, chapter number 14. I take a moment to smile. I'd like for you to smile back. There you go. It is good to be here. Amen. You all look too serious there for a second. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> if you found it, can you say amen? amen. You know, I was so... I was so blessed the other day that we went and we, uh, my wife was able to minister there on the Indian Reservation, on the Apache Reservation, and thank God for a special blessing may be imparted upon you that we're able to go and support uh, Sister Lydia. Amen. But the thing was, when she was, when she was uh, uh, presenting what the Lord gave her in her heart, as she spoke the word of life uh, there, that all the all the ones from the reservation there were would actually bow their heads and start writing notes or marking their bibles and it's something that is quickly becoming a lost art in uh because of technology that we're thankful that i remember brought back those days when i used to first sit under the ministry and preaching i was marking and writing and and uh not just putting my finger over some glass, <laughs> pretending. <laughs> so, with that somber note, we'll turn to Exodus 14. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the, the dry ground. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily. So that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. We're going to take our text today from verse 25. It'll sound a little bit colloquial today, but we're going to, I'm going to preach. Where will you be when the wheels fall off? Is that all right? Where will you be when the wheels fall off? Clap your hands to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Where will you be when the wheels stop turning? You may be seated. In Jesus' name. I love that organ, amen. It sounds, it sounds epic in here. God bless you, amen, for, for the good sound that we get from our 
musical instruments. Praise the Lord. Amen. This evening, I feel impressed to speak on this, on this subject. Where will you be when the world stops turning? Where will you be when, when the wheels stop turning? Where will you be when the wheels fall off? Amen. We see the account here in the book of Exodus. We are seeing the salvation of the Lord upon Israel. Now, this is so important, the salvation of the Lord, because in the book of Genesis, we saw the salvation of the Lord when he destroyed a world with water through the flood. And now he gives us a more a, bit, a, a closer to home example of once again destroying with water. He gives us an example of, of when he brought Israel out of Egypt and he brought them to the desert and they came to what is called the Red Sea. And there in the Red Sea when the Lord brought them to the very edge, they were, they were afraid because they were in a very hard place. They had the Egyptians behind and a wall of water or, or a sea ahead of them. So they cried out to the Lord, and they needed a way of escape. And so the Lord put a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud between them and the Egyptians that were chasing them. Listen, you might not know this, but something is chasing you today. Amen. 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 This is why we are urged to go forward in the Lord. Amen. Amen. This is why we are urged, amen, to press toward the mark for the prize. Because the enemy is on the prowl and the enemy is in the chase. And so we read where the, where the Bible says that here was the people of Israel and those that had previously owned them. And I hope nobody else owns you at this point. I hope that there's not a, there's not a person or a, or a drug or a, or a situation that owns you right now. Because it will always be after you unless you totally give yourself to the Lord. Here these individuals received, here these individuals received deliverance from Egypt. Now you can be delivered, but unless the house stays clean, uh, it's going to get worse if you don't keep it clean. And here it was that they were delivered from Egypt through the ten plagues. Uh, and they came through the wilderness until they came to water. Now water is what's going to get you a permanent deliverance if you allow it to. And so here they came. The water was before them. And while the waters would not allow, permit them to go through, um, behind was the Egyptians. The Lord came between them uh, and made a difference. Why? Because God's people should always be different from the Egyptians. And here the, the pillar of cloud and pillar of fire came down between the world and the people of God. And there he stayed for a little while. And the Bible said that when it drew evening and it became night, that the pillar of fire gave light to the, to the Israelites, but there was darkness on the side of the Egyptians. And so that night, they began to cry out, uh, and the Lord looked, looked toward the people. He listened to the Lord. He struck out his rod over the water, and the Bible says a wind came from the east, uh, and it parted the waters uh, so that it made the ground dry. It wasn't muddy. It was dry. The miracle was not that they went ankle deep, not that they went uh, through, muddy, through a muddy area, but they, the Bible says that they went clean over through the, through the ocean bed. Clap your hands to the Lord because this is the miracle. This is the miracle that the Israelites speak up today, that God saved them through the Red Sea on dry ground. You know, they tried to make excuse that it was really shallow, it was muddy, no, and it wasn't. It was dry ground. And so the Bible says that the people of Israel went down into the, into the, into the Red Sea. It was on the right and it was on the left. 
And as they passed through, they were experiencing baptism unto Moses. They were led by Moses, uh, and the salvation looked like unto Moses, who me, whose name means out of the water. Amen. That's what the name Moses means. Uh, brought out of the water. And here he was not only bringing himself out, uh, but uh, he was bringing a people out. Uh, he was bringing them to experience on a national level a salvation never experienced anywhere in the world. No one has ever since uh, and even to this day ever experienced that type of a miracle. Would you clap your hands to the Lord today? Now the Egyptians, the Lord lifted himself up to lead them to the other side, uh, and the Egyptians attempted the same feat. And they attempted to find, uh, to travel through this miraculous deliverance. The Bible says that as they traveled through, that the Bible tells us that the Lord looked on them. And when they saw the terrible face, amen, and the presence of God, that they became terrified, that they realized that, that their hearts were not right, their intents were evil, and that everything they were going to do, that they were going to come and bring a spoil back uh, into Egypt, uh, that their plans were done. Because the Bible says that the Lord took the wheels off their chariots. I don't know if you've ever been in a place where it seems that the wheels have come off, but it's not a good feeling. And just recently when coming back from up north, uh, my wheel came off and postponed my safe trip home. Thank God I was prepared and I had, a, I had everything there, a spare, a jack. And everything else, unlike some individuals that sometimes don't have a spare. <laughs> Can I get an amen, my brother? <laughs> don't ever buy a chariot that does not have a spare. <laughs> I was out just about had to have dinner. Sitting down, drove in, and I got a call. Bishop, I have a flat tire, and I don't have a spare. <laughs> Apparently, the car does not come with a spare. But thank God, the Lord took, it, took care of everything. And we were able to drop everything, and we, that story had a happy ending. But there's something that happens when the wheels stop turning. Can you imagine that here was, here was, here were the Egyptians with chariots. Now, that, the chariot, the axle and the wheel were a very technology of that day. If you had chariots of iron, well, you were the boss. Did you ever read the story of, uh, of Sisera when he had his chariots? The Bible says that they were, they would destroy, they would come and, and they harass the people of Israel because they had chariots of iron. And it, and it took the Lord to send a storm to make it muddy on the playing field so that when the war started and the Lord said attack them, it rained and the chariots weren't of any use. Yep, the Lord will cause the technology to stop. Ancient as it might be, it gave them the edge over all the people round about. And here's what the Bible is teaching us here. That there is a, there is a world and there is a technology and there is a, a power that man has invented that would take everyone captive except the Lord intervene. And I'm here to ask you today, where do you think you're going to be when the wheels fall off? Where are you going to be? Are you going to be ready on that day? Here it was that Israel heard and through faith they crossed the Red Sea. And they were on the other side. Uh, when the Bible tells us they saw the, God peered uh, through the cloud. Uh, and they were terrified at just the Lord peering through it. And they said the Lord God fights against them. The wheels of the chariots fell off. And here that 
which meant to captivate them once again. The Bible said the waters came upon them and destroyed uh, the world or the, the world that held them captive. It could no longer chase after them. What does that exactly mean? That's what water baptism is supposed to do for you. It is supposed to destroy your old world and the things that kept you captive and the kid things that kept you prisoner and the kept thing that kept you enslaved and it is supposed to at a point in time cause you to repent and to change your whole life that you have been set free is there anyone here that has never been set free Now here you were individuals on the shore and they looked and they saw everything that took place. And they were able to rejoice that the Lord has overthrown the chariot and the, and the rider. And the right arm of the Lord has shown itself strong and destroyed our enemies. Uh, this is what faith will do in your life if you're able to believe that what that god has set forth a deliverance uh, for anyone that will believe well, i can call it apostolic it's just that we have believed the apostolic doctrine uh, and everyone that finds the bible you will find that you will believe the apostles and everything that they taught and the number one thing that they bring us to is water baptism in the name of jesus not in the name of moses but in the name of Jesus, for he is our great Savior. He is greater than Moses, for he is going to be able to save more people than Moses ever did. And so here were these individuals on the other shore. But I want you to understand what happened to the Egyptians and why you don't want to live and stay with the Egyptians. You don't want to stay under the influence of Egypt because their technology failed them at the greatest moment of their glory. In a time where they were going to thought they were going to subdue the people of God. Who knows what they were thinking, but the Bible says that every one of them died there in the overthrow. What a glorious story. What a powerful illustration to show us, amen, what God is capable of. We know that we are headed to a terrible time in the very near future. The technology is already chasing us. The ability to number every man on the planet already exists. The, the, the ability to number every, every person and put a chip in their, in their mind or in their head uh, or in their hand. They're even working right now where they're implementing, putting chips in people's bodies to help them to become better people or to enhance their thinking abilities. They're, these things are already working scientifically. It is a, it is a science uh, and it is a technology that is chasing mankind. Uh, can I tell you, God is going to put a stop to the nonsense. Uh, he is going to, even though he is chasing us, and even though there have already been decrees made, that in the future every one of us will have a chip in their hand or in their head. Uh, can I tell you, it is a lie of the devil. Amen. There is no way possible that a person, amen, that the devil is going to take over everything because of this. He has made a way of escape. Uh, it is called the rapture of the church. Uh, it is called, amen, and it only comes, uh, it only comes through water baptism in Jesus' name. It doesn't come any other way because God has to make sure that every one of us has obeyed the main commandments of the Bible. He that believeth and is baptized shall and will be saved. He that believeth not, your wheels are going to come off. He that believeth not, your technology is going to fail. He that believeth not is going to be left behind. Why? Because you're trusting in what the world is saying and not what God is saying. I'm a primitive believer. Amen. I, I, I'm a Stone Age believer. I believe in the rock of ages. I believe, amen, 
I believe that my feet are on the rock. My name's on the roll. I believe, amen, that simple faith in the commandments of God and me following the commandments are going to get me to the other side. Not faith alone. If they would have believed God and stayed on the same shore, they would have remained captives. But they had to put uh, feet to their faith. You think it's going to hold up? You don't think the water's going to? Listen, you already, you already had 10 examples back in Egypt. Get in the riverbed. Get in the water. You won't get wet. It will surround you, and it will do something great for you. This was the great salvation that was shown unto them. Today, everything, you might not even realize it, but what's going to happen when the wheels fall off? They say if they were to hit a, a, an atmospheric nuclear bomb, it would knock out uh, all the electronics. All the Lord has to do is knock out the little fans in our computers. That keep, that's all he has to do. People think, what's going to happen on the great war when, when, when an army gets, when the Lord comes and they send out uh, nuclear weapons here and there? All, what is going to happen when they attack Israel with nuclear? What's going to happen? All the Lord has to do is stop the little gyroscopes inside the missiles. <laughs> nothing big, nothing can be. All the little wheels that are in there, that's, that's all he has to do. Because everything exists on the wheel. The wheel is the most ancient of all the inventions. What's the first wheel? They say the potter's wheel. What, to form pottery. The next thing that's found is, is, is uh, chariots. Aren't you glad we're past that technology? <laughs> You'd be pushing your vehicle saying, yabba dabba do. <laughs> yeah. No, but my God has given us a brain and a mind, amen, to take technology to the highest levels, amen. Even when you look at the atom, it's, those are wheels. Atoms that are spinning, joined together. When, 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 uh, when they saw, when Ezekiel saw the Lord, he saw him on wheels, within wheels. He saw the Lord underneath him, that there were wheels, cherubims, and they were all like wheels upon wheels. Uh, and within wheels, there were wheels. What was that that he was seeing? He was seeing the universe. He was seeing the microcosm of the universe underneath his feet, that everything runs circular, and everything runs uh, by his own power. And he has created every wheel that has ever existed and the power and technology of it all. So what are you going to do when the wheels fall off? You might be driving that little drug buggy. You might be, you might be in that, you might be in the, in that chariot with a, with a woman that's not your own. You might be finding yourself, amen, uh, going down the wrong way street. Uh, I'm telling you, get out of the riverbed and get to the other side. Finish your baptism. Believe everything that must come to pass will come to pass. Heaven and earth shall pass. But he said, my words will never pass. I hope some of you get a flat on the way home to get to make this lesson work. <laughs> Object lesson. We were happily going hunting also another day. We're going up there and, and we're pulling a trailer and my brother's going back there and we heard something weird in the back and sure enough, the wheels came off his little trailer. That little trailer remains up on the reservation as a testament. That when the wheels come off, <laughs> that's the way it's going to stay. If you are with the Egyptians, when it takes place, uh, technology will not be your answer. You don't understand that when the tribulation takes place, and the Bible said it will take place, uh, and when they do put a mark on your hand, I don't necessarily believe it's going to be 
modern day technology because there's going to be such an interruption of everything uh, that people will be starving. There'll be wars would have destroyed computer work. Uh, and more than likely, it will be a literal on your hand and in your forehead to prove that you have worshipped the Antichrist. It won't be a hymn thing uh, in your hand. It won't be a hymn thing on your forehead. It will be an identifying mark that, hey, he's with us. We got to find people that don't have that mark. It will be a mark of the Antichrist, of people that have sold their soul for another day of life, that have sold their soul for a life that used to be, for empty promises that never materialized. This is why you must convince your children that now is a time to serve the Lord. We are on the other side. As bishop, as first lady, we are on the other side telling you, come on, get out of the riverbed. Get up on the other side. Come on, you're gonna see a great salvation. Give yourself time. It's not gonna happen overnight, but God is going to make an end of it all. And you've got to be on the right side. Come, he said. He said, come and come, come and see the salvation of the Lord. With your own eyes, you're going to see the salvation of God who is named Jesus. Remember, he's not going to, he's not going to, get you over here. This is a thing of faith. They didn't believe that the, that the waters were going to rain because it never rained before. And so and during the flood, God destroyed an unbelieving world. Only eight souls were saved. Here a nation was saved through the water. And, and, the, and the words apply the same way. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but by the answer of a good conscience toward God. In other words, God destroyed the people at that time to save a people. But in our day, God's not going to destroy people to save us. He wants to save us from the destruction that is coming. And he does it through water baptism. Now we are saved. We are saved right now. You're saved right now. And there's still, evil is still living around us. But the time is coming when God is going to apply the same principle. He will destroy the wicked. He will destroy. The, uh, you might not be that wicked, but you're an unbeliever. That is enough to destroy you. People think, well, I'm a good person. I'm good people. Hang out with me. I'm good people. Yeah. Don't mind me with a little bit of wine, a little bit of tequila, but I'm a good people. Don't mind me talking for a little bit. You want some? Don't mind me, hey amen, doing my, my prescription drugs is just something I have to do. Now I'm talking about abuse of prescription drugs. I'm not taking something the doctor told you to take. But when you go above the prescription and yourself prescribed, you need to get out of the riverbed. You need to get out of the ocean bed. Why? Because the wheels came off then and they're going to come off now. Amen. You will find no salvation halfway between. It is a terrible place to be between Egypt and salvation. It's not a place to be. Well, nobody else believes me. It doesn't matter. What do you believe? Doesn't matter that every doesn't matter that your husband doesn't believe, that your wife doesn't believe, that your children don't believe. What do you believe? My family never, my family did not believe when I came to this. But I believed. And I believed enough to teach my children that this is the only way. This is the right way. Why? Because it's totally Bible. It's not hearsay. I didn't shake the preacher's hand and felt good about it. No, that's not the way it happened. I didn't let the majority, well, the majority can't be going to hell. Broad is the way. Jesus is not a liar. Narrow is the way that enters into everlasting life. And listen to this. Few be there that find it. This is why not everybody can get there. 
This is why if it's ever been down in your soul, now is the time to turn. Now is the time to get out. Now is the time before, listen, before the economy falls, before all the things that the Bible says will happen. Weep and how ye rich men for the calamities that shall come upon you in the latter days. It is about to happen. Right now, money answereth all things. You can write a check for anything. Got cancer, you can write a check for it. Give you your greatest hope. Money answers all things. Helps a lot of things. Any kind of sickness, there's research going on for it. Doesn't mean you're going to make it, but it answers all things. It gives you comfort. Going to doctors. But only the Lord gives healing and only the Lord gives salvation. Only the Lord. I have thing else. Money answers all things. If you have a lust for cars, you can buy any car. You have a lust for women, you can buy a lot of women. You have a lust for drugs, you can have all the drugs. You have a lust, whatever your lust might, love for attention, you can buy a million likes. <laughs> You're a legend in your own mind. I've got a billion likes. Yeah, you bought them all. Money answers all things. It will almost satisfy every lust, except lust is unsatisfiable. Amen. The eyes and hell are never full. That means you can satisfy and see things that you're not supposed to look at, and you think you're getting satisfied, but the eyes and hell are never full. It will never say it's enough. The next day brings us challenges again. This is why. I tell you today, one of these days, your technology will not, the wheels are going to fall off. All your hopes and dreams in this life are just about over. Israel is on the point of being attacked right now. We have to be ready for that great day. Many things are going to happen before the notable day of the Lord come, the Bible says. The most important thing that you and I can do is, and they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What does that verse mean? They that invoke the name upon them. Water baptism, calling upon the name of the Lord. Jeriah is going to get baptized today. On his, on his person, the preacher will call, invoke, call upon the name of the Lord. What's going to happen? He's going to be standing on the other shore. You might not know that some, but when you come out of the water, you'll be standing on the other shore. Your job will be not to go back in. But rather wait till the things that used to bother you are going to wash up on the shore. Dead Egyptians, dead, uh, dead people, dead things that used to own you. Uh, they're going to wash up the chariot, the everything, every bad habit that some of you might have had will wash up on the shore if you will stand. Listen, that's what he said. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord. He saved you from that. He saved you from your sins. He washed your sins away. He'll wash your habits away. He will wash away your, the one that lorded over you. He will wash it away. The devil will have no place in you. Stand with me, clap your hands and give him glory. I feel the presence of God in this place. Yeah, I've stood on the shore and seen, and seen that spirit that was a pusher in my life. Yeah. I've seen the spirits yeah, that caused me to do things that I didn't want to do because I didn't know I belonged to, that I was going to belong to Jesus. But at that time, the devil had me like that. I was a pretty good guy. I used to laugh at other people that used to be captive 
overly taken by drugs and say, you know what, I'm, that's not going to be me. But that's where I was headed. I used to say, what kind of fool is that that's doing? But I was headed the same way. It says, touch not the unclean thing. This afternoon, lift your hearts with me. Lift your hands in prayer. I want to make sure I didn't leave anything out today that the Lord wants me to express. Jesus, truly, thou art the living God. Truly, you have given us opportunity. Truly, you have saved us. Truly, Lord God, we stand on the other shore, awaiting awaiting your return. Lord, truly we expect, for we have not loved the world, neither the things that are in the world. For we know if the love of the world is in us, the love of the Father is not there. Thank you for making us courageous to admit your truth. Lord, let the Spirit of God light on each and every one in this place today. Let them feel your presence and your power and your holiness for without holiness no man shall see you i'd like to open this platform come come and see that the lord is good come taste and see that the lord is good don't be in the world when the wheels fall off. Don't be there when the technology fails. Find yourself a place to weep, to mourn. Find yourself a place to repent. Find yourself a place to cry out. Find yourself a place as the Spirit of God talks to his people he will talk to you he will talk to his people and only if people listen to the voice of the lord today let us speak into your heart let us speak into your mind before it's too late it's around the corner